The bag was launched in 1984. It was called Vela Bag and it was actually a backpack and it was quite a simple design in black or in brown. And I think those two examples show how different the nylon can look. And then she takes the nylon and also applies it to women's wear. In 1994, she launches the fall collection for women. Hi, my name is Liz. I'm a fashion art historian and the founder of the fashion label Pelagona. And on this channel, I'm telling you the stories behind fashion trends. Today's story is about the Italian fashion brand Prada. And I'm going to share how this brand turned itself into a household name by using the simple performance fabric nylon. It all started in the 1980s when Mucha Prada launched the so-called Vela bag. It was a backpack made from nylon, which was previously used by the Italian military. And up until then, only materials such as leather were considered luxurious. And this is why this case is so interesting, because suddenly Mucha Prada turns the fashion world upside down and people start to redefine what they consider luxurious. And I also have a quote by Mucha Prada herself, where she explains how she came up with this idea and she said I have always wanted to mix industrial ways of producing things with past heritage, with artisan tradition. I personally find it really funny and interesting that a simple material like nylon put the company on the global fashion map. Before that, they were a leather goods supplier. And today, everybody knows Prada, even people who are not interested in fashion. An entire movie was named after Prada. And the Prada Group owns other companies such as New Miu, the Pasticceria Marchese or Churches. And they are listed on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange and operate in over 70 countries through over 600 stores. And up until today, this signature Prada material is still very, very popular. We have this overall Y2K fashion trend and the Re Nylon Re Edition 2000 mini handbag is one of the most sought after handbags. The online shopping platform List called it handbag of the year and they said that the search term for this bag increased by 136%. And today I checked the hashtag Prada Nylon Bag on TikTok and it had over 6 million views. If we want to understand why this bag was so important for the Prada brand, we need to look into the history of the company as well. Mario Prada founded the brand in 1913. He was born in 1857 in Milan and he actually started out as a leather goods salesman. And during his career, he tried to learn as much as possible about the trade about the production process of leather goods, about the quality standards, and of course also about the sales and the branding. In 1913, he wanted to venture out on his own and he founded Fratelli Prada with his brother Martino. Fratelli means brothers in Italian and it shows that they wanted to emphasize that it was a family business and they started selling leather goods such as travel accessories, bags and trunks. And because of his previous experience, Mario knew that he needed more than just high quality products. He needed to create something around the brand, a brand myth or some kind of mystique around the brand. So he took a big risk and he rented a store in the famous Galleria Vittorio Emanuele II, which is a very important Italian landmark, you probably know it. It's the oldest Italian shopping gallery, which is still in use. And by moving his store into this location, he sent a very strong signal to his potential customers. He basically sent out the signal, if you come into my store, you buy some of the best products in the world. And Mario Prada was really successful with his strategy and the company received kind of a seal of approval in 1919 by being named an official supplier of the Italian king. I would like to briefly explain something here. Italy was not a unified country for a very long time. It was made up uh, of a lot of small kingdoms. And from the mid 19th century onwards, there was a unification process, which was led by the House of Savoy. The House of Savoy was a dynasty which initially ruled in parts of France, Switzerland and Italy. And they then ruled in Italy until 1946. By being named an official supplier of the Italian king, Prada was allowed to use their coat of arms, the coat of arms of the House of Savoy. And up until today, this coat of arms is a part of their official company logo. When it came to handing over the business, Mario Prada, like so many men at the time, would have preferred to give the business to his son. But unfortunately, his son was utterly uninterested in the fashion business. 
So the business went to his daughter, Luisa, who ran the company for 20 years. And Luisa Prada is the mother of Mucha Prada, who you probably know. And there is an interesting story around Mucha Prada's name. She was born as Maria Bianchi. Bianchi is the family name of her father. And she has been called Mucha by her family and friends. And later on in the 1980s, she was formally adopted by her aunt so that she can use the Prada name to show that Prada is a family business and that she is the granddaughter of Mario Prada. It hadn't always been clear if Mucha Prada would join the family business one day because she initially had other interests. She initially wanted to become a professional mime and also studied it. And then she switched to political science and graduated from the Università degli Studi di Milano with a PhD. And when she was a student, she also joined the Communist Party. And there are different assumptions why she might have joined. Some people say that she might have joined because she was an outspoken feminist. And as a feminist, you believe in equality. And this also kind of matches the philosophies of communism. I think this is a bit of speculation. I have a quote here for you where Mucha Prada herself said, communism was very common back then. Every young kid who was vaguely clever was leftist. So it's not that I was so special. For sure, I decided to be part of a group. And I also found another quote which I personally found quite interesting because Mucha Prada herself explained why she finally decided to move into the fashion world and join the business. Dressing myself, I always loved and I still love and I think there's nothing wrong with it. I always wanted to be the first to have everything, to look different from the others. It started at a very personal point. So I don't dislike, I don't reject, I don't disown clothing. I always accepted my love for clothes, but I didn't want to enter into the fashion business. But I did it, I think, because I probably liked it. And the liking of doing it was more than the theoretical dislike. We have to put this into context and also look at Mucha Prada's social circles. As I said before, she was an outspoken feminist and she was an active member of the Unione Donne in Italia, which was the women's movement in Italy. And of course, at this point in time, the feminists didn't bother with fashion. They went onto the streets and they burned their bras to show that they want to free themselves from the disadvantages that they have, from society that puts certain standards on them, and of course also from fashion that puts certain beauty ideals on them. So the last thing that they wanted to see is a fellow feminist joining the fashion industry. So there are articles mentioning that uh, it was frowned upon that Mucha Prada joined the fashion business, but she went ahead and it shows, in my opinion, that she really wanted to do it, that she had her own mind. And it also shows that you can be a feminist and still work in fashion. Mucha Prada joined the family business in 1975. And you have to remember, Prada back then was a very different company from today. It was not a global brand. It was not a household name. Actually, the business had started to slow down, to stagnate a bit, and Mucha already felt that things had to change. So she looked at new strategies, at new materials, new product lines, and the key moment was in 1977 when she met Patrizio Bertelli at a trade fair for leather goods. He was a businessman from Tuscany and later on became her husband, but also her business partner. And they started to take Prada to the next level. So the, one of the first projects was uh, the women's uh, footwear line uh, in 1979 and together they turned Prada into what we know it today, this big brand, this global brand, the household name. And now we have arrived in the mid-1980s when the star of this video was born, the nylon bag, and as I said in the introduction, this was something very unexpected. It was an inferior material, nylon, suddenly used for a luxury product, and luxury products or accessories used to be made with leather, but this is what made it so interesting, this whole dimension of being something new, something unexpected. And there are quotes of Mucha Prada where she said anything that she looked at in the luxury space, she found bourgeois, old-fashioned, boring, and she wanted to do something completely new, something completely unexpected. And this is exactly what she has achieved. And in the long run, it also shows how the view on luxury has changed. And the nylon bag, which I'm going to discuss in a bit, was the stepping stone for another development uh, for the brand uh, because in 1988 they finally ventured into women's wear. They launched the fall winter ready to wear collection and this collection was uh, in very clear cuts and the color palette was in black and white tones 
and uh, some articles said that Mutual Prada got the advice in advance not to go too over the top, to keep it simple within certain limits. So we could see that as negative, but when we put this into context, it's again very interesting because we are in the 80s, as I said before, with this maximalism, the opulence, and suddenly there is this designer from Italy who has these clear shapes and cuts and these neutral color palettes, and this is already showing where fashion is going to go. Because fashion is going to do the complete opposite of the 1980s. In the 1990s, we have this trend of minimalism, and Prada definitely was part of shaping this development. Another brilliant move by Mucha Prada was the introduction of the Prada Green. Uh, she started to launch, for example, accessories in a signature green color. So when somebody walked on the street, you could spot the bag, for example, and because it was green, you knew it was Prada. And the very same color was then also used for Prada stores. At this point in time, Prada started to expand globally and um, the signature green was also used for the interior design. So similar to the bag on the street, when you passed by a shop window and you saw the green, you immediately associated it with Prada. And since then, Prada has ventured out into many other areas. In 1993, Mucha Prada founded Miu Miu, another fashion label. A lot of people don't even know that it is associated with Prada. Prada also is active in the field of sports. They support many teams, for example, in sailing. They also had Prada Sports, which was eventually relaunched as Linea Rosa in 2018. And also they are very active in the arts. For example, you probably have heard about the Fondazione Prada, an organization that promotes contemporary art. And in 2020, Mucha Prada again surprised everyone in the fashion world because she announced that the Belgian designer Ralph Simmons is going to join her as a co-creative director, which was something again very unexpected because both designers had been independently very successful and suddenly they joined forces. And the first collection was the Spring Collection of 2021, the Ready to Wear collection. Now that we have an understanding of the brand, let's look into the details of the bag. As I said before, the bag was launched in 1984. It was called Vela Bag and it was actually a backpack and it was quite a simple design in black or in brown. And this first iteration of the backpack had no branding, it had a top flap and it also came with a D-ring strap closure and you could close it with a drawstring. So that was the basic design. It was made from nylon, as I said before. And only in the next iteration did the backpack uh, become branded because it got this triangular metal label that we know today with the logo. And there were also two additional pockets added on the outside. And this material was a special type of nylon. It was called Pocono nylon, and it was used by the Italian military for tents and parachutes. And Mucha Prada got inspired by this material when she visited a factory where they were spinning this really, really fine thread or yarn and they used 19th century machines. So she then saw this durable material and wanted to use it for accessories and later on also for clothing. You also have to put this into context. It's the 1980s when Mucha Prada did that and it's the time of opulence. It's over the top, it's maximalism and she was drawn to completely the opposite. And she took a big risk with this material because can you imagine it's material that is used by the military for tents and parachutes and she wants to convince everyone that she can turn it into a luxury product. So I actually think this was not only a risky move but also a very smart move and as we have seen it paid off in the end. And I have another quote by Miucha Prada where she explains why she was drawn to the material. Suddenly nylon started to look more intriguing to me than couture fabrics. I decided to introduce it to the catwalk and it challenged, even changed, the traditional and conservative idea of luxury. I'm still obsessed with it. And she said that many years after she introduced those items. And this new material may have been disruptive, but also a lot of people thought it was inferior or cheap, but it was actually not cheap at all. In 2004, Mucha Prada explained that it was actually quite expensive. She said this type of yarn was more expensive than silk because it was quite fine and they had to learn how to work with it. And this process of learning took them three to four years. And that's why this material actually was quite expensive. And after Prada launched these bags, it took them another decade until they achieved cult status, but they came up with many versions and iterations of these bags. And I have two examples here for you today so that you can see the difference. Both of them are from the late 80s uh, and the early uh, 90s. 
This first example that I would like to show you is a more functional one. It's in black, it has some details here and also the logo is not too visible and it stands for this durability approach that Prada has. And the second example I personally really like because it shows how elevated the nylon can look. It's a blue version and it has the metal uh, label here also and I think the straps make it look really elegant and I think those two examples show how different the nylon can look. And up until today, nylon is a very important part of the Prada brand DNA. And I have a quote from 2019 by Nutra Prada for you. She said, I have a passion for nylon to death. Nylon is the emblem of an industrial aspect. And when we started to make it, it was completely new. And since the beginning, Nutra Prada keeps coming back to that material. I think this also illustrates Nutra Prada's personal character, because as I said before, she wanted to look different. She wanted to do something new. She wanted to challenge the status quo. We also see that with her political interest as a member or an active member of the feminist movement, challenging the social status quo. And she also does this in fashion with these nylon bags. And then she takes the nylon and also applies it to women's wear. In 1994, she launches the fall collection for women. And it's a very interesting collection because it's very tailored. We have tailored jackets, skirts, coats, and it looks very smart. And you would not expect that this is nylon. Uh, this nylon looks effortlessly chic and I think this is the magic that Nutra Prada made happen on the runway. And this just shows what was happening overall in the 1990s uh, in the fashion world. People were ready for something new, they wanted to move away from this 1980s opulence and Prada was there with the right strategy, the right designs at the right time. When I did the research for this video, I was curious what Prada is doing in terms of sustainability because let's be honest, nylon is not really considered a sustainable material anymore. And I discovered in 2020, they came out with this re-nylon re-edition of the 2000 and 2005 handbag and they use um, uh, recycled yarn. They say it's it can be recycled indefinitely. It's called Econel. I'm not sure if I said it correctly. It's basically a fiber that they uh, make by using waste. They take waste, for example, from landfills and they use fishing nets and other materials like, for example, plastic carpets. And then uh, in chemical processes, they turn it into yarn in factories in Italy and Slovenia. And then this yarn is used for this new uh, bag. So I'm very curious where this edition is going, what is also the feedback in terms of sustainability and recycling of these bags. And of course, I'm curious where Prada is going next. And I'm also curious about your thoughts. What do you think about Prada? What do you think about the nylon material as a luxury good? Do you have such a nylon bag? Or are you thinking of buying one of the new ones or a vintage one? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, I have written a detailed article on thepinklookbook.com. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I thank you very much for watching. See you soon and goodbye.